spokes for minister Habat Kabafunzachi who was arrested just behind us here um, yesterday uh, in the afternoon we also have um, Stella Nyanzi remains incarcerated arrested apparently under the computer misuse act she hasn't been charged yet she was arrested friday night after giving a lecture or a talk to a rotary club and uh, she remains um, incarcerated hoping that maybe she will come to um, uh, she will be produced in court tomorrow uh, hopefully uh, and she can be charged and then we see how that goes but to discuss those and many other issues uh, with me tonight in studio let me start with Ona Peter Ekomoloit, Corporate Affairs Director, Nile Breweries, AB Inbev. Yes, good evening, Charles, and good evening, viewers. Um, uh, next to me, <coughs> Rosbel Kagumire. Rosbel Kagumire is a, a journalist, but she's been, over the last few years, specializing on social media. So, blog, uh, blogging, Twitter, uh, Facebook, Instagram. You need to talk to her. Thank you, Charles. Good evening, viewers. And, and may, I, may I add that, uh, well, I, I, I'll not add that detail. Let me, let me, let me hold it back <laughs> for now. And uh, Ivan Okuda, who's a journalist with the, the Daily Monitor, uh, published this, an interview with uh, Teddy Says Che um, uh, in today's uh, Monitor. Thank you, Charles. Uh, very good evening to our beloved viewers. And Ivan, profoundly humbled. Ivan is also a law student at Makerere University. Let me start with you, Ivan. One of the major, no, 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 not you, let me start with uh, Roswell, really. Mm, the is, story of, first. yes, <laughs> the story of um, a young journalist, lady journalist, Gertrude Tumusime Witwari. Um, uh, when Sheila was reading the news just a while ago, she shared um, both a statement from the, from NTV, the management, and a statement from the police, which confirm that she was kidnapped yesterday afternoon uh, coming from an assignment and uh, we don't know the extent of the experiences she must have gone through but whatever it was for her for her family for her young baby um, a significantly traumatizing up until midnight when she was finally released and we have seen the inspector general of police getting involved at some stage um, joining in the ethos of such but everything points to a social media post something she posted on a social media account. Um, as, as a journalist, as a lady, um, what does this say? Um, I don't think she was uh, targeted because she's a woman. She was targeted because she actually dared to speak what many of us don't write about. If you read that blog, it's very powerful. Um, I read it and I, w I shared it actually that day. And uh, I told her, okay, this is really good, this is good stuff. And we talked about what it. What is the blog about? Because our viewers don't know. Yeah. Uh, w w it's what? about, uh, she, talk, she said the headline of the blog on her personal blog, which is a website, in case people don't know what a blog is, in her personal, on her personal website, she said that what Stella Nyanzi said in response to the First Lady's advice on sanitary pads, on border borders, on food flasks, all these things. She, she thought that... Uh, Stella Nyanzi only dared to say what all of us have always feared to say. Mm -hmm. And that was the headline of, the, of, of her blog. But in there, she managed to dig about the inequalities and she talked about the environmental fear that somehow we are unable to talk about this elephant in the room, mm -hmm. the room being our country, that we can't actually go to talk about this issue um, when the first lady is involved. So that, the article was very specific about the first mm. lady. So uh, Ivan, what does this mean? If th this whole debate about the, 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 the exchange between the first lady and uh, Stella Nyanze waged on social media is continuing and growing wings and growing branches and roots. Uh, you have Stella Nyanze incarcerated. You have a journalist being uh, tortured because she's continued the discussion. I think broadly for me, the... The, the more important question that I ask myself as a student of law, but also, also as a journalist, is the fairness of institutions uh, to be able to deal with these contradictions that occur in society. I perfectly understand where the first lady is coming from, and those that are, that are angry with Stella, and those that have reservations, because she's first a human being before she's a first lady. She's somebody's mother, she's somebody's sister, grandmother, and all those relations in, in life. So I perfectly understand. But on the other side, I also understand where Stella is coming from. 
she is rightfully aggrieved, like any adult in this country who has the benefit of exposure and the benefit of um, insight to look at what is going wrong in society and have an opinion on how it can be made better. So from either side, I, I perfectly understand where they're coming from. And I think these contradictions um, can happen in any society and have happened. My only worry and fear, though, is the question of institutions. Because to the extent that we even have laws, such as the Computer Misuse Act, <laughs> the parliament wasn't idle. Mm. They had reasons to come up with the law to deal with cyber harassment, mm. for example, to deal with the cyber stalking and all these things. There's a reason why in, in, in our uh, civil jurisprudence we have defamation and all these things. To the extent that Stella can be arrested and be taken to court, can we be sure that there will be justice? I think that for me is the more important question to answer. Mm. Because I'm currently in a, in a situation where we at the Monitor published a story in which we, of course with the basis of very good evidence from the highest officers in this country, made a claim to the effect that some two MPs from Teso subregion had been involved in, in a, a very grotesque murder. Those MPs agreed. Uh, luckily, we were not yet harmed. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied that if the matter ends up in court, possibly there will be justice for us. But that's because you're dealing with MPs. Can we be sure that the institutions can, can be able to distill and process Stella's contradiction with the First Lady or now our colleague, uh, Gertrude? Uh, the answer from, you know, past experience is that uh, the answer is no. To the extent that we're still grappling with the fusion of individuals and institutions, the police will arrest you as and when there is a call from above. Uh, the courts, on a good day you can get justice. On a bad day you, you could easily find yourself uh, denied bail on very flimsy grounds, uh, sometimes because the, the, the phone calls made from above. So I think that question of institutions for me in all these contradictions that keep occurring is more important. Um, uh, you've worked with some of these institutions, Ona. You've been a journalist and now in the private sector. Mm. Um, does it surprise you that after the first lady said, I forgive this woman, I do not know what I did to anger her so much to deserve these kinds of insults? that the institutions of the state, particularly the, the, the police, are swinging into action. It, there, is, we, uh, there is very little information about the kidnappers and the torturers of Gertrude as of now. But what we know is it appears to be pointing to agents of the state because they are the ones who carry guns officially. So she was put at gunpoint as she was walking. Um, the, the incident happened as she was walking down uh, the street. Just and there was a warning on her Facebook? Yes. there was a warning on her Facebook. Before Stella Nyanzi was arrested, there was a warning on, his, on her Facebook as someone engaged with her mm. and told her, we are watching, we will come after you. And it, does it surprise you that the country is in such a state that we're functioning like we are? Yeah, Charles, it's, uh, it's a bit surprising because uh, the NRM and the media have had a long history of cat and mouse game, so to say. But you can safely say that these governments has been fair and tolerant to criticism. Many people say the president has been one of the most cartooned people in leaders in the history of modern times. And, and I think there's been quite a lot of journalism that you could say borders on really daring in terms of criticism. We had the, the Uganda Confidential, whose owners just got out of prison. We have our mighty red paper. We have many other kind of journalism which can really go deep and in terms, of, vision. Uh, oh, and in terms of attacking. So, so it's a bit surprising that we are steadily seeing this sort of thin skin development amongst political actors and maybe elements in the state that are starting to become intolerant. And then of course there's also a mix of maybe private individuals who are using their connections to have impunity. So uh, on that score alone, it's certainly surprising, and I think one needs to appeal to, to, to the powers that be, to the key players, to sort of discover that, that tolerance, you know, that has existed in the country for, for, for the last 30 years. I mean, and I think there's a lot of paranoia about social media. 
personally, I, for all its might, I don't believe social media is the most influential media in this country today. It's influential among the elite, who of course, one may say, shape opinion. But in terms of, for example, bring down a government, I don't think the Arab Spring would happen in this country, equivalent because of social media. A lot of citizens are still not aware of what's going on in social media. So I think that paranoia, which seems to be gripping some people in the state, needs to, they really need to overcome it. Of course I know. Why can't they, they overcome are it? The, the, the question is, you, 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 mm. you, you headed the press for the president mm. Mm. For, for some years. Yeah. I imagine the president was advised at some stage, that one let it pass. Mm. This one respond like this. Mm. This one um, mm. let other people handle it. When you see a story like this, um, social media posts by an academic mm. that gets a powerful individual who's Minister for Education and First Lady over a promise this government made, uh, because the president being a candidate of the NRM did not make that promise about sanitary towels as an individual. He made it on behalf of the party that runs this government. Spiraling out like it is. For me, I read two things. One, it kind of cements the assertion that Stella Nyan's made that the first lady is out of touch with the ordinary folk. Number two, and, 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 and I think it goes uh, uh, it's, uh, some distance to emphasize or to underscore the question of um, privilege. Yes. Because if it was any other person, nobody in police would be following up Stella Nyan's. Nobody in security circles would be following up people who are posting on, on Facebook, on uh, Twitter, on other social media accounts. Is there someone advising and saying, hey, hey, hey hold on a hold on minute, you're actually not helping the situation. Look, on, on the issue of Stella Nyanzi and the First Lady, of course, it's a bit ironical that there are people who seem to be mourning more than they believe, because she came out publicly to say that she forgave mm -hmm. Stella Nyanzi, and she has never said that she's pursuing legal action against her. So maybe there are other people who feel they are fighting her battles, and and. They, they may be complicating the situation. Okay, fine. Going the legal route, so long as there are relevant laws, Ivan knows the law better. And the state is right. Section 24 of the so long as there is a law that can get Selanyazi, it should be applied fairly. Mm -hmm. But I think we, I was more concerned about the, the NTV journalist who was allegedly kidnapped by people who can be alleged to be linked to the story of Stella Nyanzi and the first lady. That's more concerning But you me. cannot delink those two individuals, uh, the fact that a journalist is kidnapped and held for hours after she writes free thought the same way Stella... Yeah, that's what I'm, no, I'm saying the, the, the kidnap of the journalist should obviously be condemned, and I think it's not warranted by yeah. whoever did it, but the taking Nyanzi to jail using the right laws, one can yeah, argue yeah, it's but a normal it's, thing. But the argument is not about the, mm. uh, whether Nyanzi is going to jail. It's about the very foundation of... Uh, um, seeing all these uh, before she was arrested her house had been raided and mm -hmm. you know the things that preceded it's not like it was in a good manner she was also kidnapped she was not arrested and in a lawful manner the same way um, Gertrude was kidnapped off the street mm -hmm. and uh, when we only single out Stella Nyanzi as her only po that the posts of Stella Nyanzi as the, are the only things we should talk about I look at Stella Nyanzi's voice and how many Ugandan voices rally behind her Mm -hmm. And that's powerful. Whether you listen to radio, whether you, you are on social media. The other day I was talking to a relative of mine on, at the funeral. He said, oh, do you know Stella Nyanzi? You know, someone where Napito is saying maybe these people are not on social media, but they are actually tuned in because the issues that are being raised mm -hmm. are central to their mm -hmm. existence. Mm -hmm. no, but but you, 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 you have done some media consultancy, Rosebell. Is this the best way to stop discussion about a story like whether government is responsive or not responsive. One, to its promises during the campaign. Two, to the daily travel of ordinary folk. I think at the heart of the issue is that the perceived, uh, like you say, the out of touch bit of uh, the first lady in her own statements, right? There's the pad situation, but then there's these statements that people feel like, okay, you know, actually this is the reality that Ugandans are living. And uh, the, the reaction, of course, um, in some of the statements made did not, did not help the situation at all. And at the end of the day, 
Ugandans are always going to talk about, you cannot bottle down anger. You better think about addressing anger. The, yesterday I tweeted that anger is actually a positive emotion. Ugandans are showing you they are angry. Appreciate that they are actually showing you in the right way by speaking, not other means. They are not using any weapon. They are using just words to show you they are angry about something. So as a government in power, the best thing you can do is not give us press conference after press conference about Nyanzi. Do what you promised it, to minister, do. Minister Natural, I think, gave a press conference. Uh, uh, was it this afternoon? Mm -hmm. uh, she gave a press conference to say w we are teaching how... Um, uh, uh, w w what did she call it? We, 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 we're teaching people um, um, morals, family morals, uh, what we should be telling our families and stuff like that. You have avenues, uh, Ivan, through which you can address these issues. The first lady said, mm -hmm. I have not, as Minister of Education, I have not been provided money for the sanitary towels, uh, the sanitary pads that the president promised understandable in a poor country. And she said, mm. the reason this money hasn't been provided is because every ministry is losing 10% of its budget to fund mm. critical infrastructure projects so that you can drive this country to production of petroleum. But you have a multitude of people supposed to be handling media for the government. You have police, you have uh, all these other groups, and no one can come up with a comprehensive explanation a, a comprehensive way to deal with this situation and you keep ex escalating it? Uh, how does this work? Of course, I, I think it goes back to the, the first point I made. The, the, the not just the disconnect, but the continued delusion of um, the efficiency of institutions to, to deal with uh, some of these contradictions. Because, for example, the whole circus now, after the statement that um, the First Lady gave, uh, to NTV and the interview later on, could essentially, from a media viewpoint, the result of poor public relations advice, possibly, on our part. And surprisingly for me, because I think uh, the First Lady has, for the last so many years, been able to, to keep a delicate um, image to the extent that not she's possibly the only politician I know in this country who has a special person in one of the newspapers who handles her events. Um, how her photograph appears in some of the newspapers in this country is predetermined. Um, sometimes even the page nation of, of those stories and, and the photographs. So you, you get the sense that somebody has the benefit of um, a peer handler, mm -hmm. however crudely they do it. Uh, sometimes against professional journalistic ethics that we can, we, can, we can debate another day. But I think this one was a blunder because Andrew Mwenda starts a futile war against Dr. Kiza Besibye and calls him all sorts of crude names and makes all sorts of interesting allegations and counter allegations and sometimes valid points about Dr. Kiza Besibye. What Besibye did was to deny him the benefit of credibility by possibly calling a press conference at Katonga Road and say, you see, Andrew Mwenda has been raising these issues, this is my reply. That would have been the best opportunity for us to discuss the person of Dr. Kiza Besibye and his project mm. for the presidency. So to the extent that Dr. Kiza basically denied Mwenda that credibility, both on social media and mainstream media, you, you can... The story ebbed. Yeah, the, the story, story, the story died out. Mm. But the other story is, the president himself has been a, essentially a punching bag of attacks from uh, all quarters on social media, including TVO, uh, Dr. Stella Nyanz called him all sorts of names mm -hmm. some people would, would call uncharitable. She was ignored. Now... The, the, the other people on social media, you yes. have, uh, yes, you, you, you have uh, TVO, mm. whom they've been looking for, everybody has been looking for him, mm. and failed to catch him or her. Mm. Uh, Andrew said he had found him, but he actually did. <laughs> yes. There is uh, someone called um, Maverick Bultaski, yes. uh, who is uh, Robert Shaka, yes. uh, some, mm. some gentleman I actually met, mm. and uh, he's a decent guy, but he's, he, he's, he's been so um, um, aggressive on social mm. media, uh, critical rather, not aggressive, critical in mm. some of his comments. You have the likes of... Um, 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 uh, who, who is this guy? Um, someone call, who calls himself Atikon mm -hmm. on, 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 on Facebook. So no, 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 there are people mm. we know, like uh, the Frank mm. Gashumbas and yes. others, yes. who have been commenting on social media, and the, the response has been, well, let them say what they want to say. Yes, because imagine... Don't, don't, don't carry the discussion it, off. Exactly. Imagine yes. the president calling a press conference to respond to Frank Gashumba or to respond mm. to every attack from Selanias. That, would, that makes it front page, that makes a discussion point on every serious talk show and, and radio station. 
So you give it a lot of currency that otherwise it wouldn't have uh, gotten. So I think uh, for the first time, the, the first lady's PR team needs a shake-up, maybe. But that, for me, notwithstanding, my worry is, can we and anybody who uh, has sympathy for justice in this country and believes in a free and fair society that even if you disagree with the first lady and call her all sorts of names, you deserve to be tried in a free and, and fair uh, legal process. Can we go back home and be sure that that kind of process can happen? Look at what happened at Macau University. I spoke as uh, having a chat with the chairman Moasa, the Macau University Academic Service Association, and he categorically uh, disapproves of the action of uh, the chairman of the convocation, mm -hmm. uh, Burus uh, Balaba, uh, hastily writing to the vice chancellor, essentially putting him on pressure to suspend this lady. That for me is a problem of institutions, to the extent that an institution as established as Macquarie University cannot be able to sit back and reflect mm -hmm. and say we have a challenge. One of our own now finds ourselves in the air of the storm. How do you respond to this? Then you can have a debate about academic freedom, the freedom of expression and conscience and, 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 and speech and all these things. As a university, before you come up with uh, a decision as draconian as suspending one of your own. So for me, the, 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 the question of institutions and the fusion of uh, some of these powerful actors is very um, Ona, just before you take a break, mm. police. I mean, this country. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, there is so much criminality going on in this country, mm. and everybody is looking to police to provide uh, that leadership mm. to deal with uh, securing our lives and our properties. And they have resources to spend on Stella Nyanzi for what she said, and, 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 and digging up the Computer Misuse Act. Really? Well, uh, you, you, uh, the police may say, look, they are there to keep law and order, and if there's someone who has unruffled a lot of feathers, there could be violence because of our actions, so the mm -hmm. police need to step in. You can't blame them. And also, we must mm -hmm. agree that the police, anywhere in the world, will always be at the call and beckon of the, the powers that be. But, but Charles, it the is problem is that when we want it's the way the part of the way states operate, that they will always use all forces at their disposal, to try and exactly and no, and when you want mm. them to act what i wanted to say is mm. that actually gertrude had reported a case of mm. threatening violence against her before mm. police in those cases we don't see any service rendered to 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 in the, in the statement say they're going to put her complaint with her kidnap together on one file to help with the investigation to help with the investigation i'm talking about the preventive uh, uh, like uh, b prevent prevention measures this is a citizen who had reported a threat to their life and the inability actually to uh, when we actually need them to act we only they only act when it's politically um, okay uh, uh, siding in another way because I, I was actually following the police spokesperson the, mm -hmm. the, the statement on Stella Nyanzi are really troubling is like we have asked her to not talk about uh, race issues but she doesn't seem to know her own interests or our interests mm -hmm. and I was like whose interests are you talking what about Mr. Kaima? Who, who is we? Who's I? Are you talking about the police or somebody behind you telling you whose interests do you serve? It was very uh, unfortunate to hear that from a police We need to take a quick break. Uh, what, what, what's troubling is uh, to sit on a show like this and uh, get out of the show when we do get out of the show and every other person on the media and you're not sure whether you'll actually arrive home safe simply, yeah. simply because of what uh, you're doing. That's, that, that's a bit troubling. But just on Stella Nyanzi, I have seen amazing. The longer this story stays in the public, the more it's going to be written about. Alan Tuck in the Sunday Monitor writes a brilliant, brilliant piece. In his first paragraph, he says the first lady, uh, you know, mm -hmm. Selenia has gave the first lady uh, a roasting mm -hmm. with guttered uh, Gutter mayonnaise. mayonnaise. Yes. yes. <laughs> I, I have also seen um, um, uh, Omar Kalinga Nyago. Omar Kalinga Nyago writes also a beautiful piece and says, it's good Selenia they have gone to jail. Actually, he prays that Stellanians doesn't stop at police, doesn't get police bond, but actually arrives in Luzer and says, don't hide this, your experiences, from your children. Let them see it. And they'll see what kind of uh, person they unleash out of, uh, out of it. We need to take a quick commercial break, and when we come back, we'll be continuing the discussions. We'll be looking at the arrest of Minister Herbert Kabafunzachi, Member of Parliament for Ruchiga County, and Minister for Labor. We'll be right back. Jose Nwabine watching uh, the fourth estate now has sent an interesting message and says um, on the kidnap of uh, the journalist, I think those are overzealous 
uh, people working against the interests of the state to show that the state is this bad. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is an interesting take. Um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, Ivan, let me start with you on the story of uh, Habat Kabafundzachi. A lady reports a case of assault against her boss, doesn't get help from the police, or at least thought the help wasn't coming as quickly as she expected it to come. She escalates her complaint and it lands on the table of the minister. The minister goes to investigate, actually holds a meeting in the premises of the employer in question, and then walks out. Um, the next thing we, we see is the minister being arrested at the Serena of all places, with all police and everybody um, uh, and the media in tow, arrested for apparently soliciting and receiving a bribe that now we hear is less than $10,000, uh, because 30 million mm. shillings is slightly less than, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's about $8,000, about $8,000. <coughs> In a case where the investor had claimed at one stage that the woman wanted to extort $10,000 from him. What do you make of the story of Habat Kabafunzachi and the fight against corruption if tied together with uh, the recent arrest of the officials of the Minister of Finance? An interesting development, but also sad. My of course, the difficulty of discussing uh, something like this is we don't have the benefit of uh, adequate information to, mm. to, to form an opinion, except to ask uh, more questions. Uh, was this a setup? Uh, was it uh, an operation that uh, is similar to that that we witnessed on the Minister of uh, Finance? And all these questions that keep lingering. Because, for example, the people that are doubting the audio that is circulating in which the minister is had having a conversation with someone with a non-Ugandan accent in which the minister is essentially inviting the person for a meeting but mm. categorically stating I don't want anything from you so essentially ruling out the possibility that she was soliciting uh, a bribe uh, was this Hamid Aya the owner of the Hilton Hotel, or another person? It's actually not Hilton Hotel. I've seen the media mm. making and social mm. media making that mistake. Mm. Mm. That hotel um, up uh, Nakasero Hill initially was built with the expectation that the Hilton franchise, mm. the, the Hilton group, take would, take, would take it up. Mm. It hasn't. That hotel, um, the last we have, mm. is that uh, they have a, they've reached an understanding with the Carlson Resida uh, mm. group of hotels, which will be running it. Okay. Yes. Thank you. So... Uh, the other narrative is that the case is old. There was a case involving an Eritrean, uh, you know, a friend of, of the person that we hear is uh, in that recording uh, of Paradiso, which is a bar in somewhere in Muyenga, a bar and restaurant. Mm -hmm. And this is an old case that police has been investigating, not yet concluded. So why and how the audio comes now mm. is, is, is fairly interesting. But my only hope and wish is that we as the media, but also the actors in the justice law and order sector do not get carried away with the excitement that comes with the arrest of a minister and, and a possible framing or even actual corruption committed on his part, that we can be able to, to read between the lines and to ask the questions that ought to be asked. For example, what's the status of, of the case in which this man... The, the original yes, case. Yes, the original case. Mm. Uh, what is the status of the old case involving an Eritrean where the minister was, was helping. Of course, the minister might have outright from the uh, surface ethical issues that <laughs> you, can, you can point to. Why, for example, he would, be had in an, uh, he would be interested in meeting somebody in a private facility like Serena on, on, uh, on a weekend and, and not in an office and using the former structures. Uh, but, but that can be debated at, at, at different levels mm. for and, and against uh, the action of the minister. So the fight about uh, on and about corruption, I think for me, is more complex than the knee-jerk reactions that we saw at the Minister of Finance. Uh, if this is one of them and not a setup, I think they are all but knee-jerk reactions and kind of uh, is PR stunt by a president who has the baggage and, and burden of uh, a government that has, for the last 31 years, run on the wheels of corruption. Uh, at all levels, and more importantly, it is important to institutionalize the fight against corruption. 
Mm. Of course, it's too late to have that conversation. Those are convers those are prescriptions you can have in a post mortem seven year. Mm. Um, so you're doing a post mortem, yes. <laughs> which, 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 which can't bring the, the patient <laughs> back to life. Yes, but hopefully can uh, uh, provide answers to prevent the other deaths. Yes. So, so for example, the president can't be the one fighting corruption, the He's one leading Kawesi probe, the one leading the Kawesi probe, the one doing everything. So all institutions are dysfunctional except the person of Mr. Kagutam Seven. You can't fight corruption like that in any uh, civil society. What do you take on this story? Because you, you, you've had these stories emerge, and every time a story like this emerges, when especially a female complains about sexual harassment by somebody bigger than them, the story turns on its head, and you never get it discussed conclusion. You remember the story of, um, the, 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 I, I think, some Pakistanis who are running a car bond. Yeah, the rape of the gang rape. The, yes, uh, an, an alleged gang rape. I don't know where that story ended, and they, it, it spun on its head and... Uh, oh, they were acquitted? Yes, by, by they were acquitted by court, but mm. a civil service organization that tried to help the, 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 the victim, or the alleged victim at the time, became the subject of attack and criticism. Mm. Now, this story, since yesterday, the discussion, the exchanges have been about <laughs> the credibility, how a minister could be led into this, and... Uh, I have seen somebody saying, uh, I have seen someone on social media, someone saying, oh, I'm not surprised this man. 30 million shillings? He gets 50,000 <laughs> shillings. Another person says, he gets so little money from... Uh, and, and it's He's a former clearing and funding agent. Yes. The, the, the story has expanded such a level that it brings to question um, campaign financing. Mm -hmm. Why people pump so much money and now have to cover up with extra other money. But like, like, like Ivan says, the question, are we likely to be distracted? Is this drama of yesterday likely to distract from the original case? It has already. It has already. Yesterday, with the money splashed on a table, I was like, what is this? You know, um, w and the minister being uh, ordered, put in handcuffs, you know, all this drama. What is it? I thought that's, that was, that was the, the, you know, that was the story that is out there. Like, yeah, the minister is supposed to be the handcuffs. So we start discussing the minister and unfortunately uh, workplace uh, w sexual violence and sexual harassment in the workplace is very commonplace in Uganda and many women and men too do not have clear channels uh, to, to actually uh, we don't have the institutions that can protect them because first of all um, we live in a society that is still really condoning uh, sexual violence. As long as it, it's few circumstances when someone is a foreigner or some that we see like great outpouring um, anger and when every day these things happen in our own workplaces, in our own homes, our own maids, you know, are, are facing sexual violence, but we don't, uh, we don't handle it. But when it becomes a sexual violence case against somebody very high up, then we, we, we quickly find another story put put there. It comes to, to the whether the woman is believable, you know, it's all people rush to say she cannot be her believed. Yes. You, you start you, you start actually prying into her credibility rather than the, uh, the ability to give her a channel to be able to lodge her case and the court can't find out about that. But we are here in a public court of opinion or like we saw in the, in the news clip by NTV that Mr. Hamid was already claiming that this woman is blackmailing him. And, is, uh, and, and I'm like, yes, if you were, then you should be able to say that yeah, in the it, court of law. It's, po it's possible that Hamid could be being blackmailed. From, the, from, from the audio clip that's been making the round, he, he, whoever is on the other side, whom we now believe to be, or we suspect to be, uh, Hamid, Mohammed, yeah. uh, he keeps saying, I am being investigated by the police. Charles, so I cannot meet with you to have a discussion let this until I have been cleared by the police investigation. Charles, it's possible Hamid can be blackmailed, but at the same time he could have committed sexual abuse against a woman. So we should not be able to say it's either or. You know, we have to let the court process or the justice system figure out that. But we are not even having a chance at the justice system. The woman has been uh, claimed she was not given aud audience at the police station, and hence it becomes a political debate rather than a criminal act, mm. you know. Um, <laughs> yes, yes. You, you know, w I, when I watched the, the, the news and saw this story, so it was so surreal that I even dreamt about Serena <laughs> and money. <laughs> <laughs> so it was so weird. Floating in money. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, I think this is almost a, a classic case of Alibaba and the seven thieves. And it's, because both sides in the story, 
I don't think they have the necessary credibility. Now that the minister is alleged, so his credibility has, of course, gone down. Mm. But even the accusers, we all know, their story has run in this town over and over. You know? How they got the land to build that hotel, mm. it was clearly high-level connections, whatever. There has been a lot of dispute about their, what they are doing with the hotel. It was supposed to be Chogam, it never did Chogam. And, and suddenly they have been in the news. They have been in the news. So it's so difficult to see them as accusers that any, what you can say, seem to be making a legitimate complaint. So, so I think that has really killed the, the argument of the, the case, you know. So everyone can now jump on it and say this is a setup, this is what. Mm. So th to me that is really the main so point. So they are no winners. Uh, uh, they are no winners. Would we'll, so we'll you take you back to what you, you're talking mm. about? I think one of you mm. was talking about the mm. place of institution. Because at, mm. a at a time like this mm. is when you expect the police as an institution mm. to be telling you what direction this whole thing is taking. Yeah, of course, uh, I think because the police Unless it's because they say the guy called the president, and which is also strange. He claims he called. How did he get the power to call the president just like that to, to take action? I believe this is a case where the police will take its time. The minister is a senior citizen in the country, is abroad, is known, they can. So, but the way to do a sting operation over mm -hmm. a seemingly. Okay, but, gang. So, 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 yeah. but just hold on, I wanted to go then go the bigger issue of this latest round of corruption. Of course, the president has a point that corruption has crippled the country, corruption must be fought. But I don't believe this corruption, which is being highlighted between government officials and investors, is really the corruption that mm -hmm. this country is choking from. I mm -hmm. think the corruption everyone has seen is the one where public resources are being diverted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But where you have private investors, who might believe themselves are dubious, so to say. Mm. Because these, for example, I know Minister of Finance is largely a policy-making ministry. Where do people end up wanting to pay money for licensing and these Uganda Investment Authority? There are institutions which I believe are much more direct in licensing. These finance officials are more about policy, uh, maybe tax policy, but if you are lobbying for a tax policy, you don't have to pay someone because there's a whole chain of institutions to make a tax policy. There's parliament, you can make your case in parliament. We, as, as a business, we go through this. Mm. And we have never found the need to pay a bribe. So you whenever I see, you, you can whenever I see mm -hmm. an investor alleging they have been asked for a bribe, it means they are not a legitimate investor in my view. Uh, for for so the Minister mm. of Finance, there the, the, the questions mm. that, that arise. Mm. One is, yes, those guys have, been, have appeared in court. So mm. uh, we need to, uh, to, 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 to treat carefully, mm. to, to, to remain within the narrow confines and not offend the subjudice rule. Mm. But mid-level civil servants, yes, they are senior, but they are not ultimate decision makers. You have an economist, you have a commissioner. But and and mm. you're asking, if you're an investor and you're going to this level, by the time you get to someone who is actually going to make a decision to determine your fate and you're splashing around this kind of money, what exactly, what kind of investment? I had a chat with one of the <laughs> judges in, <laughs> in that corruption court mm. and um, it was one of the most difficult uh, cases, a uh, case involving big people because the big boys don't touch the money. Uh, it's a small... Mm -hmm. Boys that run around and Conduit. meet investors and, and pick the money and then uh, wire it to the account. So to make the connection between the big boys and girls in government and actual money is always very difficult. And that's where uh, many of these cases collapse. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, we in the public usually say because they're protected. Sometimes the big boys are just smart enough. Mm. So it's not surprising that uh, you have mid-level managers uh, getting caught in the act of uh, actual uh, changing um, uh, money, but I think this is a, an opportunity for the president, but also the police, to to do their best to ensure that uh, this matter is exhausted uh, in the shortest time possible. We live in a very fast-paced world because of social media, technology, and all these things. People are impatient. Uh, sometimes the wheels of justice have to to move really fast because it's assuming this is a setup. Assuming for some reason the minister found himself in a position where he was compromised, where he had to compromise uh, ethical expectations of him. It's important for the president, who for all his faults 
people who know him quite closely, I think Ona can confirm, he's a very patient man. So I want to suspect he will not yield to public pressure and have the minister sacked and uh, possibly trigger a process of uh, being recalled from, from the constituents by his voters. That the process of law can, can be allowed to take course and this matter is, is exhausted because if it's not, then you, assuming the, the minister is, 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 is framed, for which you don't have evidence, then you run the risk of so many high-level people in government, especially those that are involved in the fight against corruption, the IGG, uh, easily finding themselves blackmailed by uh, crooked investors, themselves with wanting credibility, such as Aya Hamid, uh, a man uh, to whom scandal is a middle name. Um, so you wake up one day and then the IGG is possibly in a hotel and uh, the few chaps in the room with cameras, journalists following and it's all over social media. Then you say the IGG has been bribed uh, mm -hmm. and it's not true. So no you run the risk of putting so many people and I know there are many uh, serious people in government that actually mean well uh, for the fight uh, against corruption, but also wake up every single day to do a decent job and go home and, and get money for that. Uh, as journalists, you meet yeah. a lot of uh, important government people. Mm. And meeting someone in a hotel is not something unique. Strange, yeah. It's not something strange. Mm. They're not going to... Uh, I mean, office runs only so many hours, mm. and they're not going to meet everybody yeah. in the office. So they're going to have to do government business, mm. even in spaces like a hotel. hotel. Mm. Uh, like, like a hotel. And, and, and someone was uh, we were having a chat with someone, and they were saying, just like what you're saying, mm. how many people risk having someone come in, throw one on the table, mm. and immediately the cameras are flashing, and uh, you're all over right. the place? And because in this particular case... Mm. In, 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 in law, you have to, to, to come to the conclusion that somebody actually committed a crime. You have two ingredients, actus reus and, uh, and mens rea. So the actual act of the, the minister taking the bribe, mm -hmm. even in this case, is very suspect from the photos and, and video alone. You're not able to even arrive at that conclusion that he was actually taking money. You, you don't see him taking the money. But then, how do you arrive at the conclusion that he had a guilty mind? You know, for example, did he ask for the bribe? No video or audio. The, the recording attempts to do that. Oh, yes. I think the to do that. Audio. But some people are disputing the recording is not of, of, of this particular investor. It's of another man or a case more than one year old. So I think... No, he, sa he says, I was at your premises yes. recently. And the, man, the man says, yes, uh, Honorable Minister, how can I know it's you? Yeah. Over the last one day, people have been calling me, different people trying mm. to con me. Yes. So I, I think for me, this is, again, another opportunity for, for the president to ensure that uh, the police does its work outside the excitement that social media creates. Maybe I saw, for example, Charles, uh, uh, um, just in a second, the case of the maid. I went with Minister Chibuli and, 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 and other journalists to the home of the toddler who was brutally treated by, by the maid. And before you know, everybody is becoming a legal expert on social media. Mm -hmm. Minister Chibuli wakes up and says in a press conference, this is the case of attempted murder. Can you say, wait a minute, you man? <laughs> we need to take a break. We need to take a break. Maybe the question is, if the president has to be called over someone wants to give a bribe of $8,000, 30 million shillings, and the president is the one... Now, now, now I'm just wondering, did the president say, wait a minute, uh, Mr. Hamid Mohammed, the minister has called you and wants a bribe from you. For what? For what? Yeah. Now, what about my daughter? Mm. Hmm? Who is making these allegations about you? Did the president ask that question before he, se he set up, he allowed him to set up that mm. thing? And when the police was being involved in this case, what questions were they asked? And of course, we, uh, on this show, we can't, uh, the minister has to prove his mm. case if he goes through due process, mm. but the other case must also be um, must also go through the, uh, pursued up to a logical conclusion. Yeah. And we hope that. Uh, uh, the, maybe the question people will be asking is this, are these many incidents? distracting from a critical debate. One, about succession that was emerging. Two, about that handshake in Parliament, which stories have now receded to the back, to, to the back water. Maybe those are questions that need to be asked significantly. And uh, we did take a commercial break. When we come back, we'll continue uh, discussing and looking at issues that made headlines during the week and have our take on those stories. We'll be right back. Welcome back to this last segment of the fourth estate. And uh, I, I've seen Lincoln from Montinda, I think, is uh, sending a message and saying um, the, um, the abduction and uh, torture of uh, uh, Gertrude Tumsimi Uitari needs to be condemned. And I've also seen Frank Gashumba sending a message and saying uh, uh, he's watching 
but he thinks that voice on the other end of the phone, the receiving voice, is not the one of Hamid Muhammad, of uh, the IA group of companies, and, and the, the people do it, uh, responsible for the development. <laughs> For, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, in, when, when things like somebody <laughs> becomes an expert, Minister Chibel all of a sudden became mm. a legal expert and said this was a case of attempted murder, uh, you know, where the, the maid was uh, you know, captured in a video torturing a baby. Mm. That's mm. our society. Gentlemen and lady, there's a topic we need to dedicate more time to, but because it's been a major discussion during the week, we need to have a um, brief discussion about it, which is whether or not President Yoweri Museveni and his political opponents, particularly retired Colonel Dr. Kiza Besiji of the Forum for Democratic Change, are actually having plans for talks or not. Uh, Sunday Monitor today is running a story. Um, the, the lead story in Sunday Monitor is talking about uh, placing the Swedish government at the center of these negotiations. And when we thought the story has been dismissed by government people, especially of Fono Pono and the others, Daniel Karinaki writing for the East African says Museveni Bessinger talks are still on course. And he says, once it's a secret push, number one, number two, once in the same room, it will be costly to walk out. And yes, uh, 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 what, what I think is um, uh, an interesting story that details the process, the people working behind the scenes to get these discussions on course. He, he, uh, 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 Daniel also analyzes in, in fairly good detail what is in it for either party and what either party is trying to put uh, to the front because the NRM dismisses and says we are in charge of uh, government, we have a majority in parliament, we have a majority in local councils, we are in control of government, so we have no interest in talking. That is what uh, people like um, Ofono Pond are talking about. And the Kiza messages and the others and, and, and the opposition are also putting in their case what they think are their areas of strength. And uh, Daniel says every group is trying to exaggerate its own strength or advantages and the weaknesses of, of, of the other side. Let me start with Donapito. Mm. Talks between Museveni and Besiji, is it just um, uh, street talk like some people would want us to believe? I think President Museveni has had a long history of uh, talking with his opponents uh, in different settings, but one constant is he never loses or he does not talk on another person's agenda. I mean, the most famous talks were, of course, the Nairobi she talks with the Dito Kelo, which ended up with the, the one that was called losing. the jokes. The talks with the Konyi ended up with the Konyi losing. Mm. So, in this case, basically, of course, unless he is ready to abandon his position that President Minister should leave power, mm. and then it means he must work under the President in some way. That's when I can see these talks being decisive as that which will remove the stalemate brought about by the elections. But if it's uh, sticking to the idea that the president, I think he said it in Soroti not many days ago, and that any gassed. talking, yeah, afterwards he was tear gas. he said any talking will be about planning for the president's exit, nothing else. Mm. If that is his position, if that is yeah, if that is his position, then the talks will just be about talks. It won't be about concluding anything. Uh, Roosevelt, yeah. I, I, I yeah. these talks, the, the, the talk, the, the, the talk that there are people behind the scenes actually working out yeah. talks beyond what we saw. We saw Ben Onveraro shortly after elections attempt to broker some kind of discussion. Yeah. Uh, I think Abed Waneka tried to broker some kind of uh, some kind of discussion. Um, the women's situation room mm -hmm. uh, said they were trying to, they, they, they did send some delegations to meet uh, Dr. Kizabese, but that was during the time Kizabese was still incarcerated at his house for those 40 days after the election. Mm -hmm. uh, after that, we haven't seen much. Um, I have information, for example, that th there is a group of people who have been meeting with the Prime Minister trying to frame a broader discussion about Mm. Uh, transition, constitutional review, and other things that have been going on quietly. Mm. Is there something real? We hope so. Uh, for me, what, what I look at right now, how are you going to be talking to a man who is historically known uh, when he goes into these talks? It's about, I either win or you lose. Mm -hmm. you know, that's but the he has talked, he has participated in discussion. Yeah, he, but, but, but he, 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 he got West Nile Bank front out of 
the bush yeah and into government uh the, the, the yeah. likes of uh the, the likes of uh General Moses Ali and um, Ali Bamuze and the others yeah. in different groups. Yeah. Um, he got onto the discussion table. We are talking said, about political dialogue, mm -hmm. no longer about when it's gun violence and someone has an upper hand, probably you have no choice to realize that you don't have much. So you get in and get uh, uh, s somehow something, you can get out uh, mm -hmm. at some point. Mm -hmm. But we are talking about political dialogue with a man who has all cards. He has the whole national character himself right now. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to say, no, I don't think it, it belongs you t uh, to you entirely. And my question is, what is, uh, w what is the morale behind Museven's appearance in these talks? And, um, and what is the need for him? Mm -hmm. what, uh, what are those buttons, whoever is actually um, pushing for this dialogue, uh, what are the buttons that are being pressed that Museven feels the need actually to, to, be, uh, to, to be at the, at the table? And let's not read, sometimes not read too much into what public, uh, uh, publicly uttered statements. Sometimes it's part of the game, you know, mm. to show I have the strength, uh, you don't have the strength. So I'm looking at what does Museven, what does Museven, what is pushing Museven to get into this dialogue? Because I don't, I, I, I don't, I, I don't see it uh, right now. But I'm sure there is something. Uh, and if the dialogue, uh, I keep thinking that it's, it, it might be beyond between Museven and Besige, but it's beyond the two men. This dialogue. So the more we talk about Museven and Besige dialogue, we need to go beyond. Even when we say that, what do we mean? What is going to be included? What are we? What are we talking about? Mm. If we t if we the, say the, that the, it's the a conversation, the story appears to indicate yeah. that uh, documents have been shared between the Museven camp and the Besige camp to, uh, to, to, to presenting a broad frame of discussion. Let me let me let me just look at uh, what Daniel says here. He says. Um, the last private conversation between President Yuri Museveni and Dr. Kiza Besice, a telephone call in 1999. It was tough and inconclusive. Besice was awaiting his release from the army, where he was a colonel, but relations between the two men had already frayed. And, and he, he, I, I think somewhere in the middle of, of, the, of the story, he tries to look at the behind-the-scenes players and tries to place them into context. This is what he says here. Senior government officials, uh, no, this is the denial by Ofono Pondo um, uh, about that they, 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 they are not talks going on. He says, agreement has also been reached in principle on the main agenda items. The FDC, said, the, the FDC side is keen to have an audit of the 2016 elections, which Dr. Vesley claims he won. Official results gave President Museveni the win. The NRN said, side wants an agenda item on law and order as it seeks to end the defiance campaign that Dr. Kiza Besege and a section of the FDC party has been pursuing since the election, one often characterized by street clashes between the police and protesters. And he says, despite the progress, suspicions remain high on both sides. History is partly to blame. Um, Ivan. Well, I think to... Dabo has been writing the stories yeah. about the, the talk. credit of my senior colleague and uh, and boss at the monitor Tabu Tajira. She's been able to, uh, you know, sustainably uh, cover uh, the story and and have an in-depth and insider appreciation of, of what's going on behind the scenes for for the readers. Um, but I have more reservations on 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 the talks because I know for a fact that. Um, there is every effort in Mr. Museveni's backyard for a return on the ballot come 2021. And um, there is every push from different quarters, including um, in parliament, including in the executive, and partly in the judiciary. It will be interesting, for example, to watch who heads the constitutional court after and after and if Justice Kavama retires and, and he backs off uh, his plot to termine his age. Uh, it will be interesting to, to watch in the next few years. So I think to the extent that you are having a conversation about dialogue and there is sufficient reason to believe that the president is doing everything uh, he can systematically to lift the age limit, which I think for me is the most important conversation politically uh, that we should have as a country, because that essentially answers Dr. Kiza BCJ's own quest. Because mm -hmm. the extent that Mr. Museveni is not on the ballot in 2021 is to say we can have a chance at a free and fair election 
we can have a chance at a meaningful but, 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 contest. But obviously, uh, uh, President Museveni is not going to negotiate himself out of power. If he has exactly. windows, if he has windows, yes. for example, to amend the constitution mm. and run after the, 25, mm. the, the 75 year um, uh, hurdle, mm. then he doesn't have any motivation to negotiate himself out of power. And Dr. Mm. Kizabezi has maintained over the years the only discussion you can have in between elections. Mm. We just went through the 2016 election, we have another election in 2021, is only to discuss that President Museveni is not a factor or is not on the ballot in 2021. Exactly, and, and, and I think personally, uh, as a Ugandan uh, who wishes uh, for better governance, I think that should be the, the, the center of, of, of the conversation. The, the, rest, the, the rest of the, the, the layers of, 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 of detail, I think for me, are really inconsequential. Because you can have the election audit, it can be manipulated, you can have all these things. Yeah. Um, I've had people say, you know, Sweden is not a country you can joke with and all these things. Museveni has been there, done that. I was reading a paper by someone called Kiplagat, who was permanent secretary uh, of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Kenya, and was one of the main actors in the Nairobi talks. And he gives a graphic description of how Mr. Museveni ch uh, kept changing positions. At one point, walking out of the talks, he goes to Europe, comes back, and he has a new agenda. He has new terms and conditions, including uh, uh, stating he does not recognize the government of, uh, of the Lotoise and calling them Idi Amin's cooperators before Larotunu jumped on the table and reminded him he was actually <coughs> containing Amin's elements in, in the NRA and all these things. And then before that, you have the delegation being brought to Western Uganda where they, they meet Mr. Museveni's lieutenants and they say, we don't agree with this rubbish of power sharing and all these things. And then the war starts. Uh, so, with, with uh, uh, Ambassador Kipagat, actually, yes. uh, he, he did give a talk to one of the State of the Nation discussions, mm -hmm. Stone yes. discussions, yes. and uh, he, he's got a wealth of experience in negotiations across the continent. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, so, 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 for me, if there is anything there to talk about, it's the place of the Ugandans in this. Do they matter? The grass. Of course, they are supposed to matter. Mm -hmm. The place of the Ugandans is second to, to, to the extent that you can yes. debate how I things one plays out. No, I think. Of course, President Museveni wants to be there in 2021, and President doesn't want him to be in 2021. What do Ugandans want? They want a better country. So the mockery of elections that the FDC has alleged is always taking place. If they can't stop it, no, should they? Should it happen again? In their view, but, but look, because I'm saying one of the things they need to discuss critically is: Do we need another election in 2021, which is like previous elections? at the expense of Ugandans? Do you in need to spend more money on that kind of election in the heart. or to spend money to, to really address the welfare? Because so much money goes into electioneering that one side believes is bogus and one side believes is legitimate, then you I go into a vicious cycle. What that, that I think that that at the heart mm. of it uh, mm. is what Ivan said, that uh, many Ugandans believe if Museveni was not on the ballot, that w is already one step for this country. Which which Ugandans? Be be because many we've, many nev many nev we've never, we've never had any any transition of power peacefully yeah. in our whole existence as a country. And I believe that those Ugandans who are interested in the rule of law that Museveni is talking about, that he's putting at the agenda, it's uh, the question of him actually standing is stands in the way of rule of law in this but country. But you, you saw that in Kenya. Let me put it One side also is to address the Uganda reality the way we have seen it. Let, and stop having some utopian idea of what Uganda let, let, let me put no, this but there's nothing let, let about the challenges this in this country. Yeah. I, I have asked the question. How much as media do we aid things like changes of the constitution? If we begin a discussion, we have a constitution that is obtaining at the moment. The question of term limit, I, I mean age limit, hasn't come up for debate. By putting it out every day, on radio, on TV, in the newspapers, on social media, somewhat validates and makes it easier for anybody who wants to introduce that kind of discussion or that kind of change in the constitution. We've had the other day the Minister for Constitutional Affairs saying... Um, um, uh, Kahindo Tafiri, uh, drumming for President Museveni to run again in 2020, or speaking like President Museveni will be on the ballot in 2021, and it's okay. And it's the man. And it's a done deal. Yes, and it's a done deal. And is the man supposed to present constitutional amendments? Maybe that gives us an insight. Mm. But by allowing him to go on with that kind of discussion, I mean that kind of talk, 
without questioning him he's already and, mocking. Whether, and whether he's actually not mocking the constitution is not that where the debate should be i think i think the, the role of the media sometimes also gets exaggerated um in this context for example if mr Museveni, with the way he's been abusing processes uh from uh, 2005 you know, and was able to manipulate his way through and all these things, I don't think there's much the media can do. We're not talking about uh, some Scandinavian country where the media has the power to, 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 to bring people to power. You're not talking about South Korea where the president has, uh, uh, you know, her wings clipped or South Africa where Jacob Zuma can be put on the spot, partly because the media plays an active role. We're talking about Uganda and, and, the, and the stark reality and uh, like in any other third world dictatorship, Zimbabwe, uh, if you want to talk about Kenya under Moy, if you want to talk about Angola under Eduardo dos Santos, if you want to talk about uh, Cameroon under Paul B and all these other countries. It's, I think the role of the media also gets overstated. But in this particular case, mm. in my humble well, well, view... Well, whether overstated or not, mm. um, self-respecting media yes. should step back and say, no, 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 we have a stopping point. It doesn't matter how much the media's influence is, mm. but you have a stopping point instead of also cheering along and standing by the roadside and cheering along as processes get abused. The media must report things as they are. So no, I disagree. Hmm? The media is not simply the mirror of society. You're oh, here because is, well, it's not it simply, it uh, I'm not saying it isn't. It is not just, does not stop us saying, look at yourself, look at this. It is supposed yeah, but, but, to offer, but if it's Rose supposed Rose to offer Rose more Rose than Rose 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 the reality, Rose Rose the reality, the reality is that, look, Mr. Napito should declare yes, a conflict of interest. No, he has no, every, no, no conflict he has of every interest, interest <laughs> in, in an amendment of the constitution and the raping that comes with that of the constitution to remove the age limit. The so you don't have just a realist like you, uh, <laughs> Ivan. I'm saying if the media sees uh, uh, General Tavira talking that they should change the constitution, if the media expects from history, because you look at trends mm. and you look at the motion that it's going to happen, why should the media refuse to report? I'm sorry, we have some callers. The citizens the oh, oh, at the moment, we have some callers <laughs> I need to pick. Uh, I, I need to pick them. Hello? Hello? Yes, your name and where you're calling from, sir? Uh, I'm Engineer Raymond. Yes, Engineer Raymond, keep your question or comment brief. Uh, okay, my comment is... Hello? Yes, we are listening to you, we're hearing you. Uh, first of all, I'm talking about the yes? Yes, please, go ahead. I think you... We as media have... We've lost it. Uh huh. Yes. 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 Have the budget for media. I'm sure those journalists that were at Serena at some point they were by somebody. Why is not someone like bringing it down? And then again, you're talking about about uh, this. Uh, it's very unfortunate uh, that our sister Gertrude was uh, was kidnapped or something. But you're in conclusion that it is so. And so you're pointing fingers as if you have like authority, as if you have information. I think if you had information like the lady was suggesting, maybe she can go to police and, and help us to get things. Hey, do, do, Dr. Raymond, you, you, you started yes. by saying we lost it on Stella Nyanzi, but I think we missed you on that. So can, can, can you tell us uh, where yes, we sir. have lost it as media? What, what I'm saying, yes. generally reporting as media, eh? mm. that's why, like, you see how she was welcomed like a hero, eh? just by you, media, because your vote, the corruption, I think, has come as uh, begun with you. You don't dig deep. Mm -hmm. Into things, you just be uh, reporting. After, uh, but for example, I'm saying that, like for the case of uh, Kamafunzati, they must have been some media practitioners, I think. Who, or media you, you, you're just making an allegation like you accused the media of making. You, you just accused the media of. You, 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 you said the media follows allegations, and you're making an allegation that they must have been paid. Do you have evidence? So what, what I'm saying, yes. what, I'm, what I'm telling you, yes. the point of journalism generally. Eh? Mm -hmm. If you can be very honest with me, uh, it, it is one thing. You've been here just yourself a few minutes ago saying that she was kidnapped. 
by the same actors, maybe of the state, where you have no evidence. Uh, Ra Raymond, I, 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 I don't think it's fair to misrepresent what we said. Mm. We said we have little information at the moment, but yes. indications are she might have been kidnapped by the same actors of the state. And I remember saying that they are the people who hold guns. So if someone took her at gunpoint, you expect that that gun belonged to state actors. But how sure are you that she's on gunpoint? I, I, I never said I'm sure. Eh? I never said that I'm sure. Yeah, but, but it, it, oh, your colleague was, was busy saying that you know it is, the, it, it, it is the same actors. If she reported to police that someone wanted to hurt her, mm. how, how sure are you that it is not the same, same people? Eh? who really are now, uh, are now maybe who have just got them and why do allow police to do its work? Okay. You just accept, you go on the national television uh, and you, you know, the part of journalism, I think, it, okay, the issues are there, they're happening, mm. but you as media houses, I think you have the wrong. Yeah? Thank you, thank you, Raymond. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I think you provide us critical feedback, so we appreciate, mm. and my colleagues will have a take on uh, uh, what, what, uh, the, the things that uh, you have raised. Can we pick another caller? Hello? 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 Yes, we can hear you, sir. Your name and where you're calling from? Keep your question or this comment brief. calling from Kampala. Yes, please. Go ahead. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Now, I, I, I won't comment on two issues. Go ahead. One of them is about the Stella issue. Yes. Now, I'm not commenting about her arrest and, the, uh, and whether justice, justice will be served or not. But my question would be, if I start using the kind of language she uses, would you keep me on this phone call for even one second? Depends on what issue you're raising. I don't you know. know. You, you, whatever issue I'm talking about, but if I start using the kind of language she's using, mm. if I start, would you keep me on this phone call for even a second? So what is the issue you're Rising. The issue is that you guys are, are, are really missing the point of the fact that she is so vulgar and mm. you can't let her talk to your kids. You, you, trust me, if you have kids and, and you want someone to, to sit them down and talk to them, you can't call Stella and Nias to talk to them. Okay. Uh, our kids are on Facebook <laughs> yeah, and they find that talk with, with all that language. You, 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 if you saw the reply she gave to the first lady, when the first lady said, I, 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 I'm forgetting that lady, the kind of language she was using. You know, mm. you, you guys are skipping that because it's this kind of, that, that you guys have issues with the first family, and whatever happens to the first family is so good to you guys. Okay. So now you're skipping <laughs> So you, 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 do, no, what, what about her arrest? Do, do you agree that because of what she said, she should have been arrested? No, I'm not talking about the arrest and whether mm. this is But how do you split the issues? Point out the fact that her language is so poor. Yes, but how do you split the issues? If she says something... What I'm complaining about is her language. And okay. You are, you, Thank you. You don't want to talk about it. No, we'll discuss it. We'll talk about it. Now, the other issue I want to talk about... Yes, sure. ...are the talks. We're listening. Now, we, we, we went to two elections. Uh, the president was elected. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Now, because Bessie wants to keep himself relevant to, 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 to the community, I, 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 and he, he, he always brings up this, this talk, what are they going to talk about? Okay. If, if, if talks are so good, then let's stop going to do elections, such that we, we never want to avoid a leader. Those who, 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 who want to, to become leaders, they go into talks. Thank you. Otherwise, if we elect a leader, and for him, because he lost and he feels like he shouldn't have lost, he's, he's supposed to be the winner. Even in the talks, he says that the talks should be just about transition. So basically, there are no talks. It's about him becoming the president, him, him, and him. And trust me, if the elections, let me say they went, Mawazi said, still those would have contested. Thank you. So it's about him becoming the president. Okay. Yeah, so, so the talks, talk, so the talks can be about him becoming the president. He just wants to keep himself open to the community and use the national media to do that. Thank you. I, thank you for your comment. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll have a discussion about it. We have another caller. Hello? Hello? Hello, Mangosha. Yes, sir. Your name and where you're calling from? Hello? I'm told your network is uh, problematic, so if you can try and call us again, let's pick another caller meanwhile. Hello? Hello, good evening. Uh, good evening, sir. How are you? Good evening, how are you doing, sir? 
I'm very fine. Uh, this is uh, Nyambi Richard Riemaro. Yes, Richard. Okay, Charles, uh, I would like to raise two points here. Sure. The first point, uh, the first point is about the talks uh, which have um, uh, all of going to happen between uh, uh, President Kiza Vesiji and Mr. Museveni. Hey, I, 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 I thought President Museveni and Mr. Kiza Vesiji. <laughs> uh, no, between President Kiza Vesiji and Mr. Museveni. Yes. The fundamental mm. issue here is talks between President Kiza Vesiji and Museveni should formally focus on Museveni's activities, as, as it was in Kenya, when Moi was given a chance to talk to uh, the, the people about his activities, and eventually it worked for him. That's what he wants Museveni to do. This is a very golden opportunity for him, other than getting Uganda into chaos, and having himself and his family a very, uh, a very bad exit. So let me hope that Mr. Seveni and his advisors will advise him accordingly to take this opportunity so that he does not stand again in the next election. Thank you. Secondly, yes. Um, uh, just one point here. Yes, sir. I think um, uh, Mr. Karafunzaki, uh, yesterday when he was being dragged into the vehicle, imagine a whole member of parliament and a minister got dragged into a vehicle by an SPC, the, 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 special, uh, the police constable, just like a good, a good thief. Really, it brought a very bad image, and I'm very sure Tabafunzaki could have, who could, could have been framed, and he himself said there were cameras in the hotel. Let him be given a chance. Let the cameras in the hotel where he was seated be played so that the public, so that you can get to know the truth. Otherwise, uh, thank you guys for, 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 for the, uh, this edition of, of the fourth estate. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm really very angry at the, the, uh, the previous caller, I mean, who says that the journalists have issues with the first family. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Yamaro. Uh, let's just speak one more caller. Hello? 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 Okay, I think we need to bring it back to the studio. Uh, do we have a caller? Hello? 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 Yes, sir, we can hear you. Your name and where you're calling from? My name is Peter. I'm going from Fort Porto. Yes, Peter. Keep your question or comment brief. Uh, thank you. I have two brief issues. One, um, I, I think most Ugandans are jokers. And uh, the unfortunate piece is they joke over very serious issues. They delay to believe that sooner or later some of these issues are going to catch up with them. And specifically, I'm talking about Mr. Ona here. Mm. Whereas you try to soothe and get a midline and uh, defend the status quo, Mr. Ona, sooner or later you depart, you, you realize that this situation is catching up with you as an individual. Mm. What am I talking about? Mm. Systems have all tied to work for one person. Those who were hunters are being hunted, the like of Mbamas and the like. And slowly by slowly, the situation is catching up with everybody. Now what Stella Nyaz is doing, she's actually trying to catch attention. She's trying to bring key issues on, on, on the floor of parliament. I mean, there's no way you can do this in such a hostile environment. So I don't want to concentrate on the language she's using. Mm. She's actually trying to get the best luck for the best situation. And indeed she has caught the issue is being debatable. Finally, I didn't know history, but people who studied this, the, the French Revolution, will guide me. You remember this other queen who was out of touch? And to her, things to do with uh, someone... Hello? Sorry, Peter, we, I think we lost you there. Um, gentlemen and ladies, we need to bring the discussion back to the studio. Thank you very much, uh, callers. I know there are many callers, but we need to bring the show to mm. an end. Mm. You've listened to the criticisms. Mm. Uh, let me start with you. Um, the media, mm. you've lost it on this. Mm. <laughs> yeah. No, I think the criticism is fair. Um, it could be fairer if uh, some people declare their uh, workstations because, you know, I know, for example, the monies that go to to take care of some of 
uh, the kind of phone calls that people get in radio stations and, and TV stations uh, like this when you're discussing matters uh, that touch those in power. And, and so Do Dr. Raymond, um, someone called Dr. Raymond said uh, the media lost it on Stella Nyanzi, um, uh, was compromised in the coverage of, uh, he believes journalists received money in the coverage of Kaba Fonzachi, and then the second caller said, uh, uh, we get excited covering, I mean talking anything bad about um, uh, the first lady, and says, uh, um, on, on Stella Nyanzi, we're not discussing the language she used. I, I, I think at the start I said, I perfectly understand where both sides are coming from. I sympathize with the issues that, uh, that Stella raises. I associate with some of them, the issues of human rights violations that have gone on in this country, the issues of um, uh, government making commitments it can't keep, uh, the issues to do with uh, corruption, and a cocktail of, of so many other challenges that, that the country is faced with, and some of which the president has, has acknowledged, uh, some of which, if you read the interview uh, of Sheila and Wichita in the Sunday morning in the monitor and watched on TV, the first lady has acknowledged. Everybody agrees. Even government uh, spokespeople agree there is corruption, the human rights violations that go on. The last meeting that the president had uh, and chaired that of the National Security Council, I know what happened, and the president was extremely bitter. He was putting General Kaleke Hura and uh, the head of CID, Grace Akul, on the spot and using very um, harsh language. If you get a glimpse of what happened in those meetings, you get the, 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 the picture of how much concern the human rights violations are going in this country. Wanton murders in Kampala, outside Kampala, actually concern the president. So for somebody to be raising those issues and say, wait a minute, we need to have a conversation about this, I think it's not a contradiction. Mm. You might disagree with the language they use. And again, I said, I understand where the facility is coming from because she's a human being before she's anything. She's somebody's mother, wife, sister, um, grandmother, and all these things. And indeed, she's not the first to get aggrieved. Newspapers in this country are sued almost on a weekly basis. If you go to the civil division of the high court, there are defamation suits. Meaning, even ordinary Ugandans get aggrieved with the media. I know Charles Mbire, for example, has sued MP Betty Mboze over what he thinks was a defamatory post on Facebook. So even businessmen get aggrieved by politicians who make reckless statements about them. So the first lady getting aggrieved by what she thinks was a below-the-belt uh, verbal attack by Dr. Sela Nyanzi is not new. Uh, she is entitled to, to her grievances. She's entitled to get angry. She's entitled to emotions and feelings like any of us. The challenge, though, is how you uh, deal with that contradiction of somebody who thinks I can use any language to address the issues that I think are dire, and somebody who thinks the language you're using is defamatory, it's inflammatory, it is derogatory. That, for me, is the, the discussion that we're having to, to ensure that there is justice for both parties. And I think in this case so far, the, the scale is tilting against uh, Dr. Stella. We've already seen uh, posts by her lawyers on Facebook and, and Twitter, uh, how she, she is currently at the, at the police cell. We hope tomorrow she can be produced in court and all these things. So it's not a contradiction to speak about civil liberties. It's not a contradiction to speak about uh, matters of justice, because today it is Stella who might with all your disagreements with her, have possibly overstepped some boundaries, but she still is a human being. This country has been humane to murderers. This country has been humane to terrorists. This country has been humane to people who have caused the most suffering. So we cannot surely afford to be inhumane to a person who simply became vulgar on Facebook. I think we deserve better. Y you take, uh, Rosbell. Um, I would say that uh, for me the whole language about the language of Stella uh, it will take time for some people to understand it. I never understood it from the beginning. But slowly when I read, I understood what she mixes fiction with actually what uh, the reality is. A, she's a writer, and she can choose, uh, she can choose to use uh, language uh, that is powerful in that case to deliver her point. And in this case, I think we are trying to apply moralism, uh, m morals, because she's a woman. You know, we've been, you've been enjoying red paper saying all things, manner of things for years, decades. But Stella Nyans becomes vulgar because she's a woman, because she's daring. And that changes the dynamics. Gender comes into the question. She, she, you, you, you see posts saying, you're a mother. And the people reduce women when they become mothers. You, you're not supposed to say something because you're a mother. Some, somebody would argue from the other side, what would have happened if the person posting the things that she was posting was actually a man against yeah, the Yeah, it, for, yeah. For, for sure that would be a different dynamic. But Stella, being a woman can write about menstruation in a way a man will never be able to capture it. And that's 
added onto her genius, which in her language and writing becomes the post that you see. And you can, you might be not be able to read her language, but you must agree that she actually is a good writer and she uses that language. And she's not the first person when people use culture. Where I grew up from, there are women like that who actually use that language to deliver their point every day in any village. You could find a woman like that. But they try to say, you are educated, you are a woman, you are a mother, you are a Nalongo, you should not say this. But who told you? What she should and what she shouldn't say. We are in Uganda. We don't have the. We don't. We 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 are not homogeneous, and language is there to be interpreted and changed and used differently. So we can discuss language, but at the end of the day, Stella Stella's language cannot be. She, she should not be in jail because of that language. Because you enjoy that language every day in different forms. Then when it comes to Stella, you try to say, oh, she's immoral. No, it's not about your morality. It's about the uh, freedom of expression at the end of the day. Okay, um, um, I, I, I have a few views, but uh, mm. someone says, uh, Ndeja Simwe, just a moment, I'll come to you. Ndeja Simwe says, um, <laughs> yes, Ndeja Simwe says, uh, thank you for your interview with Che, um, he's very excited about it. Thank you, Mr. And, uh, Simwe. Yes, and someone else says, um, I need to highlight that um, those people who abducted uh, um, uh, Gertrude said Rosebell is on their list. Musa Ismail Ladu is uh, watching us and says, uh, Honor, mm. though I like you as a person and respect you as a veteran journalist, yes. I think your, your long involvement with your capitalist <laughs> employer is beginning to blur your judgment on how this country <laughs> is or should be managed. Mm. Um, uh, another listener here sends quite a number of uh, messages. Um, uh, yeah, you, uh, is try this uh, viewer tried to call but wasn't getting through says um, mine is about Stella Nyanzi such language should be prohibited for whatever reason learned a person as Stella is she could have found some better language to express herself how would any of you take your daughter using such language because you've not bought her pad you mean the more people get aggrieved the right it becomes I, I, let, me, let me first listen to Ona and then we'll respond to this. Look, on Dr. Selanyans, I think generally the tide of our cons conservative society is against her approach and she can't win. She's I, against I, I, the I conservative approach. I think approach. today in the churches, I was seeing in the NTV news, she was being condemned by the priest. What do you I mean, expect? Yes, because that's our society. So she needs to, to try to live within the society. She Look, actually has just, challenged just, that just society. I think an approach as a, as a place in the academia, you can write poetry, you can do what you use whatever language you want, but when you are talking about direct things, you can describe Ooh. people's sexual organ sizes and what. <laughs> <laughs> She's <laughs> going to continue yeah, to do that, about. and there's yeah, a place for she, that she in our society. Be, she'll be challenged. Now to <laughs> the politics. Mm -hmm. Look, I totally respect the uh, view on, on President Museveni. But of course, I don't agree when somebody says it will catch up with you. That's kind of like threatening. Yeah. And again, that is the more reason. That was Peter. Why, that's the more reason mm. some people say President Museveni should not leave because <laughs> <laughs> there is uh, like a fear that they, they will get retribution. And that's not what the country deserves. But the leaving okay. is inevitable. It's inevitable. It's mm. inevitable. I think people should not predict <laughs> doom if President Museveni stays or leaves. That okay. will not be useful. We, 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 need, we, need to, we need to bring this to an end. Uh, we need to end this. Um, uh, this is Mike Segawa. He says, uh, my observation about the president's latest arrest of public servants over corruption, I feel bad that it takes Mr. Museveni to mm. okay operation against yeah, government yeah. officials over bribery allegations. Where is the IGG in all this? Good point, yeah. As for Honorable Kava Funzachi, I think he stooped too low in his cell phone conversation with Hamid. The minister should never beg to help an unwilling rape suspect. Um, uh, another listener here, uh, let me see. Another, uh, sincerely, you guys in the media cannot even question Stella Nyanzi's vulgar language. What is our country degenerating to? Whether me or you, it's not need for anyone to be insulted in such a language. Uh, that's, uh, then someone else here says, uh, thanks for the show. Nyanzi's mode of presentation is, a sec is secondary to the pertinent issues at hand, given that. All the known better forms of decency have not provided sanitary pads, among other things. Uh, that's a listener called Alex. Um, uh, Josia, Joe Osia in Intinda says, uh, in uh, Museveni's degree thesis, he wrote that the black African liberation was energized when they dared shoot the white colonialists and witnessed them breathing in agony as they bled and died demystified. 
Dr. Nyanzi is less, about, is less about girls missing education for lack of pad because most schools do not offer education or the context in which learners can be educated and more about the discovery of a new target that appears to be the long sought for soft underbelly of the president. Um, <laughs> There the, are the many messages. Another listener says, um, can Rosedale use that language on national TV? If yes, let her do it now. <laughs> <laughs> You've been bad. I wouldn't. <laughs> Why? <laughs> it has its place. I would uh, not good, accept good, use good, it but somewhere Imano, else. Imano, Imano but Ruka, it's on my Facebook. Yes. I could use it. Hold it. Imano Roka says, uh, Stella Nyanzi needs to be understood where she's coming from. Her language has got all of us talking on pertinent issues in our society using her expressions. Another listener says, uh, this is Andrew Rumba, I think, says, how, some, how come religious leaders have been silent on all manner of atrocities meted out on Ugandans, but now are loud about Nyanzi? Are they also victims of ignorance about the real issues? Nyanzi is rising in her choice of communication. Uh, ladies and been, gentlemen, we've yeah. got to bring the show to an end. Um, we've uh, actually stretched it quite a bit. But let me just say one thing. Uh, someone called attacking the media and saying the media has been involved in, um, I mean, must have been paid that to organize the budget. That's a long discussion we have had mm. for many years. People who want to account, I, I, I always give one example. We went to cover an event when President Yoweri Museveni was being nominated to run for president for the 2011 election. And we found someone had come and told journalists to register and generate a list for a transport refund. And I said, every editor, every newsroom would spend the night waiting for that story. Why facilitate journalists going to cover such a story? So, it's not a one-way yeah. treat. Yeah. No. People who want to either have money to spend and think they're going to get their way into the media, may pay journalists. But not all journalists, including the people who covered the arrest of Kawa mm. yesterday, mm. were paid journalists. That no. I can state. I know there are people who went there because there was a story, a minister of the government, Something was being arrested apparently in a sting. Whoever gave that tip, that deserved coverage. On Stella Nyanzi's language, one are the issues she raises, but number two is the reaction. The bigger thing is not what Stella Nyanzi, what language she used now. Mm. The question is, once she has used those, that language and said certain mm. things, mm. how do you respond to them? Exactly. How do you deal with the, with the grievance? How do you, de do you deal with the grievance she has raised? Yeah. I mean, people get abused every day. People react differently. If they were in a bar, they could choose to box each other. They could choose to pour the to pull out a pistol. Uh, yes, to pull out a pistol. Now the reaction is what is being debated. Mm -hmm. And that's what is going to continue debate, uh, being debated. And I think what we spent and a lot of our time discussing here on the show mm -hmm. was, does it help to react to Stella Nyan's the way it is mm -hmm. by keeping her in discussion? In a, in a second, Charles. And, and, and I think the people that handle the PR for, for government and, and those that are concerned with uh, things such as tourism, need to appreciate that because we're in an increasingly uh, global village, these things don't help the image of the country. Mm -hmm. the, if you read the judgment in the Fred Muema versus Facebook Ireland Limited case, Fred had actually won that case. Because mm -hmm. to the extent that the Irish High Court uh, made an order for the revelation of TVO's identity, Tom Volte or Kalinga, to the extent that the High Court was um, ready to have Facebook reveal the identity of TVO, except one thing, Uganda's history of human rights violations. And one of the affidavits sworn in by Nicolas Opio uh, was to the effect of giving evidence of how uh, Shaka, mm -hmm. Sali, not Shaka, 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 no, Shaka, Shaka, uh, uh, Maverick Robert Shaka, Shaka. Robert Shaka mm. was treated by the police. Allegedly, uh, his TVO, he's arrested, blindfolded, uh, r uh, driven around Kampala, uh, b b battered by the police, uh, first time he's, he's taken to court is after the expiry of uh, 48 hours, and these things don't help the image of the country. No. The, the reports from all human rights groups dr uh, drove the judge to conclude that Uganda is not safe yeah. for a suspect to be given to the hands of government. And I think that's not helpful for any country's image and tourism. So these arrests of Stella Nyanzi and, and now the kidnap of, the kidnap of, of this person, whoever is responsible, Our time is out. Does not help we need to get out of here. Um, uh, the government retains a lot of young people. They're supposed to be social media warriors. If they can't respond to Gertrude's blog and choose mm. to kidnap her, whoever they are working for, mm. 